and welcome back. And today on the bench we have my URAD radiation monitor and this is a model A.3.4 which is one of the earlier ones. <clears throat> now uh, Dave over there at the EEV blog did a review on these. He was given one by the fellow who developed this and uh, so he did a full review. I'm not going to do that. We're going to talk about this one though and the problems I've been having with it. When Dave did the review on this, I thought it was a great idea. Now what these are, are gamma radiation, background radiation monitors. And I live within spitting distance of a couple of nuke plants. And not that I'm paranoid, but I, you know, like to keep an eye on what's going on as far as radiation levels. Also nearby is a coal-fired plant and a gas-fired plant, and they give off a lot of... Uh, of radiation on their own but it's not in the gamma spectrum so this wouldn't pick it up this is like stuff from nuclear fallout uh, nuclear power plants nuclear accidents etc etc <clears throat> now the problem is when this came it came with this for a power supply this thing draws less than half a watt and it came with this Chinese counterfeit copy of an Apple power supply. This is what was supplied with it. Oh, and I should mention, you don't need the computer to be online for this to work. This has an Ethernet connection, plugs into your, your local internet connection, and as long as the power's on, this is reporting back to a central facility. And it comes up on a world map, and you can go to www.uradmonitor.com. And I thought, what a fantastic idea. And I jumped on board and bought one of these. Well, within a couple of weeks of it being connected, it went offline. It went dark. And I fiddled around and fiddled around, and I checked out the Chinese power supply and found out that the thing was only putting out about 4.5 volts, and it was real noisy. The filtering was terrible. So I threw that away and plugged in a very, very high-end commercial 5-volt power supply with virtually no ripple and a very expensive supply that I had laying around. And it was fine for about a month, and it went offline again. And I have found since then that every couple of weeks I have to go out, disconnect the power, and reboot this thing because it just shuts down and it doesn't function anymore. When it initially failed, I contacted, and I hope I say his name right, Radu, the fellow who uh, sells these, and I got no reply about the power supply, but I figured, ah, he's a busy guy. And I followed that up a few months later, asking, you know, how many of these things are falling offline? No answer. I've had no reply on either one of the emails I sent to him. And I did notice, I went online, and I started counting up how many were online worldwide. And it, between 23 and 25% of these have gone dark which is a pretty high failure rate if that's why they've all gone dark. Now there's a good chance some of, some people have just lost interest and disconnected them. So I'm not going to blame all of them on failure. But it seems mighty suspicious to me that 23 to 25 percent of them are offline. Now when I got this, uh, tell you what, let me open this thing up. Okay, with the covers off, with it opened up, here's what we have. Got the Geiger tube, and we have a uh, Ethernet controller. The Ethernet controller is an ENC28J60 that's hiding underneath this board. And there's its clock crystal. On the back side, we have a 328P, Atmel Mega 328P, which is a little microcontroller. We have the oscillator here to produce the high voltage. For the Geiger tube, I believe that's what that is. I can see the inductors are the inductor there, so I'm assuming that's the oscillator for the Geiger tube. It takes about 180 volts. And that's about all there is on here, a few passives. I've been over this thing several times with a microscope and carefully inspected every solder joint on here. The only ones I can't see with great clarity are the ones on the Ethernet controller. So I'm probably going to desolder this board and check the solder joints on the Ethernet controller because when this thing fails the Ethernet connection completely goes away. Both lights go out. 
cycling power brings them back now I'm not very hopeful it's a solder joint I suspect there's something locking up when I got this board it was covered with solder balls because I opened it up to take a look I heard something rattling around inside the enclosure before I powered it up I slid it out of the enclosure and it was just covered with solder balls it looked like it had been soldered together by an eight-year-old now he's having these made in China unfortunately and probably low as bitter and it took me about half an hour with flux remover to get all the solder balls off of it and the board looks like it's been scrubbed down with a wire brush or something at some point so I'm not blaming him he's having these things manufactured for him off offshore and in China and he's in Europe but uh, I'm afraid the reliability isn't real good or at least from what I've seen so we're going to touch up the solder joints, put it back together, and we'll give you a report after okay, we've done it's back together. I couldn't find any smoking gun. There was a few solder joints on the Ethernet board that could have been cold, but I couldn't find any loose connections or cracks in the solder, either, even under very high magnification. However, we touched them up. We put a little flux on them, touched them up, and we're going to put the unit back into service and see what happens. Now I should also add, these are not waterproof, uh, despite claims that they are water resistant, then really not. There's seams everywhere. They're not evident in the picture in the uh, video here, but there's a seam down both sides and these covers don't have any gaskets. The unit is mounted out of the rain. It is completely weather protected from the rain and from direct sunlight as recommended. Uh, my barn has an overhang of about 18 inches and this is nestled right up in the little alcove underneath or underneath the overhang of the barn it never sees rain and never sees direct sunlight so we're going to put it back into service if you're curious about whether or not it's still online you can go to uredmonitor.com and bring up the map I am the monitor that is in Hookset, New Hampshire. I was the first one in New Hampshire, and about six months after I put this one online, one showed up out near the coast in the general vicinity of the Seabrook uh, nuclear power plant out there. So there's two of us in New Hampshire now running these, and you'll be able to see by the time this video is up by logging on whether or not I am showing a radiation reading or whether or not there's a black mark or black circle because mine's gone back offline again here's keeping our fingers crossed thanks for stopping by all See right later. I don't know if we were successful or not I plugged it in and you can see I've got the green circle up here in Hooksit New Hampshire and I was wrong this other guy is not in New Hampshire he's just over the border in Amesbury Massachusetts the Seabrook nuclear plants right in here um, but he's just south of it, just over the border. I thought he was in New Hampshire. I'd only looked briefly earlier. So I am evidently still the only unit in Hooksit, New Hampshire, and we'll leave it online and hope that we hit the hit the uh, problem, but I do not think so. When I powered it up, it was acting pretty much like it was before. The green light would come on on the Ethernet connector and then go back out after flickering a little bit and after two or three or four power cycles the green light would come on and stay on and then eventually connect but uh, what would happen typically before it would run for a day or so and then it would go offline again and you can probably over here see there's one in Gloucester that's gone dark that's gone black and if I zoom out on the map here a little bit you can see there's another one that's gone out here, another one that's gone out here. And it's too bad. This was a project I was really on board with. And if you look across the United States, you can see a lot of black circles. And it's a shame. I'd really like to be part of this network. But to be honest, after two attempts to contact the guy to see if we could rectify this and getting no response, I'm not about to spend another $150 uh, on a unit that... Uh, you know I can't get support on and it's too bad it really is a shame because unlike the other systems that are out there you don't have to have your computer on 24 7 this unit standalone connected to your internet connection 
and less than half a watt of power drain and it can sit there and run continuously. So there you have it. You'll have to make your own decision as to whether or not you want to buy one of these and join the network. Um, again, I was tickled pink to join the network and very disappointed uh, about the fact that we had a failure and no response from the uh, gentleman who was or who is selling these. See you later. Thanks for stopping by. I'm the Radio Mechanic. Take care. Okay, here we are the following morning, just a few hours later. And once again, we are offline. So, something is wrong with this unit. And I should add in passing, I've had three different network cables as well as three different hubs and uh, Ethernet hubs connected to this. So it's not a hub problem. It's not a cable problem. It's something internal in the unit is failing the uh, Ethernet connector, whether it's the Ethernet connector itself or something in the microprocessor or microcontroller, I can't tell you. But it shuts down. The lights go out on the Ethernet connection and the only way to bring it back is to reboot or restart the power. <clears throat> and it'll come back for a couple of hours and then fail again. Sometimes it runs for a week, sometimes it runs for an evening. So, I guess I will be offline permanently, permanently because as stated uh, earlier in the video here, I'm not going to invest another $150 in one of these. Sadly, it's gone. I'm the Radio Mechanic. See you.